Hey guys, it's your girl Kareen and I'm back with another story time. This is the story time about my dad. Now, I'm going to be completely emotional. Um, and if you see me do a lot of blinking, it's me trying not to cry. But let's just get into this video. So come give it to me. So, as I just mentioned before, this is a story time about my dad. I have um, a towel over here. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab it because I know that I'm gonna start crying my eyes out and I'm really gonna try not to, but let's let me just start. So, some of you that do or do not know, my dad passed away in. 2011, May in 2011, he had cancer. Um, so before he passed away, even when I was very young, my dad battled. I want, I swear, like almost every cancer possible. He had throat cancer, prostate cancer, like everything you name it. And he always beat it. He didn't come back. He'd go for his regular checkups and sessions and all that other stuff so and on top of that i was very young so i don't completely remember a lot of when that happened but this time in particular he had it in his lungs he had gotten surgery i believe i was like 22 or 23 to remove it and he had um metal plates and bolts in his rib so that way they basically cracked it cut him open and removed the cancer so everything was fine and then it comes back and before it comes back and it comes back with a vengeance my dad had to get um, a blood transfusion and before that happened sorry there's something in my eye before that happened, my dad was like really, really, my dad was always a skinny person, but this time he was like super thin, super frail. And when he had to get the blood transfusion, um, I just remember him looking so much more full, so much more like my dad, the dad that I remember. So this was, I want to say, a couple of days before his birthday. His birthday is May 11th. And celebrate his birthday. Everything is fine. And I want to say the day of his birthday, after celebrating a little bit at home, or maybe the day after. Um, and I'm sorry, I don't remember because I've blocked so much from my memory because it's just too hard to relive, continuously relive and remember, but I just remember him saying that he couldn't breathe. So we had called the ambulance and I remember the ambulance, the EMS guy like asking me a bunch of questions and I'm just bawling my eyes out because in my heart, in my heart I felt like this was going to be one of the last times that I actually physically get to see my dad again and when he's asking me questions I'm just like I, I honestly don't know and he's like who's this your grandpa like your dad like who is he and I'm like that's my dad and he's like this is your dad and you don't know this information and I was just like fuck you like I'm here emotional crying and then you're gonna have that fucking comment I really just want to punch him in his face but I told him to ask my mom and my mom got all the information and he rushed, rushed to the hospital everything seemed okay um, it seemed like he was gonna get better and then I was with the whatless man and if you tune into my video about me being pregnant it's right here and it will the link to the video will be in the description box then you'll understand why i call him the wetless man which is kairi's dad um i was with the wetless man and i was waiting for him to get ready because we were going to pick up my sister and then we we're going to go up to the hospital to see my dad 
So I'm chilling with the wetless man and he's taking forever to get ready. And my mom is literally just blinging my phone, like hotline bling. Like my mom's really just ringing down my phone, trying to figure out where I am, what's taking me so long. And, and it wasn't like I was with him all day. I had work and I had left work. I had finished work early and then went to go chill with the wetless man. And um, then we're going to go get my sister and literally on my way like leaving to go from brampton because he lived in brampton to toronto to pick up my sister my sister calls me and she's like mom just and she sounds she sounds so hurt and heartbroken and she's whispering and she's like mom just called me and told me that daddy passed away and in all honesty, I laughed my head off because I'm a person that needs to see before I believe. I've never completely believed hearsay. I listen to it, I take it in, but I actually physically need to see it. So I laughed and I was like, yeah, I know he's not. No, he's not. And I, the wetless man is right beside me and I hang up with my sister and he's like, what's wrong? And I tell him and he's like, are you okay? Do you want me to drive? And I'm like, no, I'm fine. No, he's not. He's not dead. He didn't die. Um, we're gonna go pick up my sister and we'll get to the hospital and we'll see my dad and everything's fine. So driving, speeding on the highway, it's raining. I literally almost got into like five accidents because I'm just speeding because I just want to get to my sister and get to the hospital right away. So I call my sister and tell her that we're outside. And by this time, me and the what this man switch. Um, and my sister comes outside and she literally like falls on the floor and he runs out of the car and helps to pick her up and helps to bring her inside the vehicle and she's crying and I'm just like stop the crying he didn't pass away like this is foolishness um and then we finally get to the hospital we park and we get inside and she's just drawn down and just still hysterical and I'm like no I refuse to believe it and we finally get to the 17th floor. And when the elevator doors opened, my heart literally stopped because it like hit me that he probably really did pass away. And before that my mom kept calling and kept saying that my dad kept asking for his girls um and sorry um i kept telling her i'm coming i'm coming telling him that i'm telling him i'm coming i'm at work you know i'm coming and like my mom was saying the whole day he just kept asking for his girls and when the elevator doors open my sister literally falls to the floor and me and the wetless man are trying to pick her up to help her walk to the room that his body is in and when we get there i literally like leave them behind me and i run into the room and i'm like faja and his eyes are closed like he looks like he's sleeping and i walk over to him and i touch his arm and his arm is completely just cold his body is starting to get stiff and um, I just started to hug him and I'm telling him like please don't leave me I'm only 24 years old and you can't leave me I'm not even married I don't have any kids you're never gonna see your grandchildren you're never gonna walk me down the aisle like you're supposed to be always here. And this cannot happen. Like I need you to open up your eyes. And he did not move. And I just kept hugging him and whispering to him and kept on shaking him and saying Faja, Faja, Faja because I called him Faja. <laughs> And I was trying to get him to just wake up and he wouldn't and I just 
broke down. I don't even remember who was in the room. I don't remember anything. I just remember getting there and just being in such disbelief. And then I started to blame myself because he kept asking for his girls and this friggin' guy took forever to get ready and because of me, why well, my sister never got to see him and also because of him, we both didn't get to see him and um, it was literally like, I, it, it, it was just so surreal. <laughs> Sorry, I'm li literally trying not to cry. <sighs> and I'm still holding on to him, I'm still rubbing his head. I'm still trying to shake him like it's it's really not sinking in that he is gone and I remember there being some family in the room and we're talking and I'm just like this cannot be happening like my dad cannot leave me like he cannot leave me right now like he cannot leave me I'm only tw I literally just turned 24. I'm born in January and it's now May. We just celebrated his birthday. He can't leave me. I always envisioned having my parents for a very long time. At least till I'm like in my 30s, 40s. Um, and this cannot happen. Like I don't have kids. I'm not even married. He's supposed to walk me down the aisle. And I know that sounds really selfish but I never met my grandparents. They both passed away before it was even a thought or even anything. And same thing on my mom's side. I never got to meet them. They passed away before it was even anything. And it just killed me because I'm just like, you cannot leave me. I'm only 24 years old. I literally just turned 24 in January. Like, I can't lose my dad right now. I'm going to spend the rest of my life without my dad. That's not fair to me. It's not fair to whatever children I'm going to have in the future. It's not fair to my future husband to not be able to meet you. Like, he's supposed to be asking you for my hand in marriage and that's never going to happen. You're not going to walk me down the aisle. I'm never going to have a father-daughter dance. Like, it's just not going to happen. Like, I can't. Like, it. it I cannot wrap my brain around this happening right now. Like, it can't. This has to be a really sick joke, and Ashton Kutcher's gonna pop out of nowhere and be like, punked! And that's honestly how I felt, and it didn't happen. And, um, they. I don't even remember how long we were there. I just remember. My dad had a lot of kids and I just remember some of his other children coming around and um, it was just a very, very unreal moment for me. Like it was so unreal. And a couple of days later, if you look at the vlog that I just mentioned, I found out that I'm pregnant. So now that I really want to break down I can't even because now I'm thinking about okay so since I'm pregnant my dad is a part of him is with this baby and in Jamaica they say one gone one bond meaning life leaves from one and enters into another in a sense so I'm like, okay, well, I need to make sure that this baby lives. I need to make sure that this baby is good always. Like, I just, I cannot lose myself right now. I'm, I need to be super strong. And during the funeral, I just remember sitting in the front, them closing the casket and freaking out a little. I'm really trying to compose myself because in my head I'm thinking about my dad no longer being here but I'm also thinking about trying not to have a miscarriage um, and I know that sounds really selfish but I was really just trying to think of the fact that my dad is now in this baby that I'm carrying and I need him to continue living on and um, 
the funeral, his burial was just, there was just so much going on. Everyone's breaking down and I'm literally crying but I'm not crying as much because I know my mom and my sister need me. I think I've seen my mom cry in that 24 years of my life. Um, I think that I might have seen my mom cry maybe three times before. And not and the three times that she cried before is because she was in pain. Not because of um, hurt. It was literally because she was in pain. Um, because she had a medical procedure done. So, and I think maybe one other time, like a family member passed away. And that's literally it. Never see my mom cry. Like she is such a strong minded strong willed Jamaican woman like a lot of people a lot of West Indians not even just Jamaicans I find that a lot of West Indians don't really have much emotions and she was definitely one of them and she broke down and that hurt me but I knew that I had to be there for her and she had her siblings there to help her um, and then my sister being completely distraught she is we're both very emotional I'm a little bit more emotional than her, but that day she was just lost her ish. So because my sister is emotional, my mom's emotional, they're both breaking down. I had to be the strong one for the both of them, what I felt like, <coughs> excuse me, and then also for this new life that I'm carrying. So to this day, it's going to be seven years and I have not come to terms with his death it has been one of the most trying life-changing experiences i can say that i have ever faced in my entire life initially my dad used to go away to jamaica for six months and come back and i'd be like yeah he's in jamaica he's coming back when the weather gets better he'll come back and when he didn't return, it just it just broke me. But I was still pregnant. I couldn't really do much. It just, I don't know. I don't know. To this day, I haven't completely broken down. I carry, I have for a long time carried the weight of him asking for his girls on my shoulder because of me he never got to see my sister or he didn't get to see me before he left um, and it's just it's just been very hard it's been really hard a part of me completely 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 died when he left like he took the biggest part of my heart when he died my dad was everything to me no matter how much me and him have ever argued the moment that he left I just lost me. I haven't been able to find that part of me back. Even in having my kids. It hasn't filled that void. It's been so, so, so hard. And when people see me, a lot of people have seen me, people that knew me from before, and they're like, whoa, you're, you're different like you're not as happy as you used to be and i'm like how can i be happy about life when one of the most people most important people in my life is no longer here how can i completely enjoy anything when my dad is not here like that was my superman that was my chargy me and my dad and he's no longer here. How can I be happy? And I mean, there's other people that have lost parents. 
at such a young age but I felt like because my dad had other kids and they had kids they got the opportunity to have him in uh, the better parts of their life as well as have their children around him and I felt like I was robbed of that and I mean no one can determine when they're gonna be born and when they're gonna take their last breath I get that and I understand that I maybe shouldn't be oh, I'm trying to think of the right word I understand that I shouldn't be selfish but I can't help but be selfish I can't help but be envious of the fact that many people still have their dads around regardless of a relationship or a strange relationship I would give anything humanly possible to just hear my dad's voice I can I try to remember him all the time and I try to remember his laugh I try to remember his voice and I try to think of all of the great times and the many jokes that we've had to just keep pushing through so that way I don't completely lose myself and that I don't ever forget him like when my son was born I sh showed him pictures he would always look at pictures at one point I'm West Indian so I believe in this stuff at one point I swear to you that Kairi saw my dad and I believe that babies can see non-living and that's just what I believe and if you don't believe it that's absolutely fine you don't have to believe it but I definitely believe that Kairi has seen my dad because he'd always look up in the sky he'd always look at his pictures like oh I know this guy and when he got older one time he went to my dad's photo and was like Papa and I never said the name Papa to him so I don't know how he just came out and said Papa it was very odd to me and sometimes he would look in my room in a certain spot in my room or he would point and be like Papa Papa it was, it was a lot so I know that my in my heart I feel like Kairi has seen my dad but um, yeah losing him was honestly the worst day of my life I don't think that I've ever had a day like that in my life I mean I've lost a lot of people close to me but losing my dad was the absolute worst and I don't wish that type of pain that I felt on anybody not even my worst enemy and I don't even have enemies not even people that I don't like I don't wish that type of pain on them excuse me but I'm going to end this video because I can feel all the emotions floating through me and I don't want you guys to see me ugly cry so um, I recorded this video because I felt like there are some people that have similar situations to me and maybe having a worse time in coping or dealing or whatever the case may be and I just did this video so they would know that they are absolutely not alone I share the same pain as you and if you ever need a shoulder or an ear whether I physically know you or I'm physically there to lend the shoulder or the ear it's still there but um, I will see you guys in the next video okay So come give it to me